I'm Cindy Guerrero. And I'm Tomas Guerrero. And together, we're bringing you voices from around the university. To talk about things that matter to you, our students. This, this is RG Voices. For some more insight on today's topic, stay tuned after the first part of the podcast for a special interview with another voice from around the university. All right. Hey, guys. Today we are going to talk about uh, feedback and why it's important. I know, right? People tend to hate it, but it's okay. We promise. Um, So we're going to talk about why it's important and how to give and receive effective feedback. Um, So first I want to kind of go into this concept that's introduced in an article by Straub. The title escapes me, but I believe it's in the book. (laughs) Uh, We're super prepared. Uh, So there is this um, this concept that uh, Straub introduces in one of his articles in the book, and it's called uh, Directive versus Facilitative Feedback. And I like to emphasize that to my students uh, because when we talk about directive feedback, we talk about telling somebody what to do, Um, change this, write this instead, I don't get this, write about this instead, things like that. So it's like, it's the key word in that is direct, you direct somebody. Um, Facilitative, and on the flip side of that, tends to look like suggestions for feedback. You're asking the author questions. This is interesting, but have you considered writing about this? what do you mean when you talk about this? Can you give more detail? Mm-hmm. Um, I like this. Have you considered this angle to this issue mm-hmm. or whatever it may be? Um, so it's hard to say which kind of feedback you're going to be asked to give because, again, it depends on your professor. And it's hard to say that one is always better than the other. Uh, it's more like a scale because um, with directive feedback, it's good for some situations. Like you can't be facilitative with spelling or grammar corrections uh, when you're editing your papers because um, you can't ask somebody, hey, you spelled who this way. Have you considered spelling it this way? (laughs) No, you just have to tell them this is how who is spelled. Change it, right? But on the flip side, facilitative feedback um, can't or should be in lieu of directive feedback when you're starting out in the process. If you very early on in the writing process tell somebody on their draft to change an idea and not give them a suggestion like you're being directive instead of facilitative it might be a bit discouraging for them Mm -hmm. and you might accidentally change their ideas to the point where it's not really their ideas in their paper anymore it's it's your paper it's your voice rather than their in rather than their voice and we want our own voices to shine in our work because we are basically the dictators of our work we are we are in charge we are the author yes authority the authority see Eh, it all ties in um so i guess it depends on the time and place what kind of feedback you can give or you should give right so one of the one of the things we should make mention is there is a difference Mm -hmm. and i want everybody to pay attention oh yes between editing and revising very early on in the feedback process, we are focusing on revising. <laughs> revising doesn't mean your grammar. Or spelling. Or spelling. Revising focuses on ideas. Right. What is this thing about? Right. So if you're reading your peer's essay and you you find yourself going, oh my God, this is really good, mention that and tell them, here's why it affected me. Don't just say it was good. Because that's just as bad as, you know, getting your paper back and somebody just crossed out a word and then put a question mark. What right. does that mean? Right? And the, the, the same thing can be said over, like, getting your paper back and somebody just put a check mark next to something. And then you go, well, why did you like it? Right. Right? So when we're giving each other feedback and we're focusing on revision, we're talking about you guys throwing a conversation back and forth through your writing. Mm -hmm. Uh, and asking each other, well, what did you mean by this? I I, I was kind of, I got confused here. Or, hey, you jumped into this topic and then you immediately moved away. I was kind of, I really wanted to know more. And that's the type of conversation you should be having in your feedback. Right. That facilitating type of conversation. Mm -hmm. Um, As opposed to, you misspelled this word. Right. And, and it's so it's so strange, and I, and I find it kind of humorous, because I like for, for my classes to 
create a, a set of guidelines, not rules, but guidelines for each other on what we should focus. And number one is always do not focus on editing, i.e. grammar and spelling. Right. <laughs> do not do it. And it, that could be rule number one, two, and three. And lo and behold, the first time they give feedback, I inevitably, I inevitably hear, hey, you misspelled this word. And I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> the whole goal was to focus on revising and giving facilitative feedback, these suggestions, these comments that help us kind of make our paper more effective. Mm -hmm. But it's okay. Uh, and I say it's okay because you're one of the things that we're trying to focus in on is removing these bad habits that you probably gained because that's how you were treated in school. Right. But, you know, one of the conversations that we end up having is, well, did you like it? Did it help you? Mm -hmm. And inevitably everybody goes, no. And then I ask, well, why do you do it? Right. <laughs> <laughs> if you know it doesn't help, yeah. then why do you do it? Right, right. right. But it's not everybody. No, no. No, it's some students. Yeah. Yes. Um, and it's not also, it's also not to say that editing isn't important. No, it's no. just, um, it's not the primary concern in the beginning. In the beginning. Yeah. Later, when you're close to turning in your research paper or literacy narrative essay or whatever it may be, then editing comes into play before right. you do that. Right. Um, because it's, it tends to take away the attention from the audience member if they spot a, a mistake in your final version and we don't want that to happen because then some of the purpose behind your essay or whatever mm -hmm. it may be gets a little lost yeah and so we just want to polish it up at the end um and make sure that all those spelling and grammar little habits and mistakes that uh, slip by us get corrected mm -hmm. and uh, then it's time to turn in the final version right? right um and that's not to say that you have to be perfect in spelling and grammar in English or Spanish or whatever language that you choose. Um, it's just that we have to kind of practice good habits uh, right. later in the process. But the first step is to make sure that the, the content is solid. Right. I, I, I usually give a couple of uh, suggestions. Uh, the first one is, it, like I said earlier, it should feel like you're having a conversation mm -hmm. with the writer mm -hmm. uh, through their writing. And by the end of it, if you can, if you can tell the person you're giving feedback, or if the person giving or getting the feedback from you goes, "Wow, it actually felt like you read what I wrote." Right. That's when you know you did a good job. Right. Because by having that communication and establishing, "Hey, I'm actually listening to your ideas," as opposed mm -hmm. to, "I'm just trying to find errors," mm -hmm. it makes a big difference. Right. I, I've had a handful of students who, uh, after I give them feedback. Uh, the next day in class, they go, sir, you made me cry. And I go, what did I do? Like, I'm so sorry. What happened? And they tell me it's the first time in their life that they ever felt like somebody actually read what they wrote. Right. And it's kind of a travesty if you think mm -hmm. about it because, you know, they've had how many years of school life? And it's not until their first day you know, semester in college. Right. That it feels like somebody read what they wrote. That's a long time to feel like your voice never existed. Right. And worse, your voice was constantly criticized for these mistakes that everybody makes. Right, right. So we want to kind of steer away from those habits and uh, give feedback at a college level. And what that means is uh, focusing on helping each other make the content of a, whatever we create strong and keeping those rhetorical choices in mind that the author was trying to make for their audience mm -hmm. and like their purpose and the form that they took and helping them solidify those choices to right. make them the most effective as they possibly can be. Right. If, if you listen to our episode on reading academically and reading mm -hmm. rhetorically, mm -hmm. you're essentially, when you think about feedback, you should think about how you're reading it rhetorically. You're, just, you're understanding what, what the author or what the person you're giving feedback is saying. Right. But you're also trying to say, like, hey, you know what? Like, you kind of lost me on this point. Or, you know what? I really understood the way you explained this. I like the example that you used. Right. Because it made me laugh and it made me think. Right. You know, that's the type of feedback that you should be getting and giving. Right. Especially at the beginning. Right. Because there really is no point in editing your paper at the beginning mm -hmm. because it might just be, well, none of this actually has to do with what I asked you to do. Let's redo it. Anyway. Right. So all that editing goes to waste. That's why we want you to focus on revising first and foremost. And then at the end, you can look for your grammar Nazi friend and be like, hey, <laughs> rip me apart. And, right. it, and it tends to happen that students get better uh, at editing just kind of naturally as they practice more 
when they're actually revising. Right, because their work starts to sound more natural. Yeah. And that's really what grammar and spelling are. It's just um, the physical representation of how we speak. Right. So right there would have been a comma if this had been written out. Mm -hmm. And now I'm starting a new thought, so that would have been a... Uh, a uh, actually, or, it probably would have been a period. Right. And then a paragraph break would have come in between when we were talking about straw versus now when we're talking about revising and editing right. and everything. Um, so it's just like the physical representation of how we speak. Mm -hmm. And so if you can figure out how to how to see that and how to hear it when you're reading your work out loud, mm -hmm. then those grammar and spelling choices come along very naturally. Yeah. Um, and so we also do want to emphasize that you want to be encouraging when you give feedback. Oh, yeah. And polite. Uh, it's, all, it's, it's constructive. And uh, we want to make sure that we are never discouraging to anybody because mm -hmm. then you just basically silence your, their voice by right. telling them things in a mean way. Right. So maybe start with some compliments. I liked this. This is really strong. It was really interesting. Mm -hmm. And then have you considered this? Posing your feedback like a right. question. Right. Because if we pose it like a question, then it sounds more like a suggestion rather than a do this, a sort of right. command. Right. Because one of the things we, we want to make sure and try to build in these classes is your voice. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if we go back to the concept of, you know, making things better, reading, again, rhetorically, and, and transforming what you have seen into something better, mm -hmm. if we keep cutting each other down... Uh, and, and, you know, discouraging each other. And, and strangely enough, that's what happened to us in the past. If we keep, I guess, recreating this cycle of cutting each other down, then nothing new ever comes around. Right. But by giving each other the opportunity to be like, hey, you know, I really like this. You create an opportunity for that person to go, okay, then I should keep doing this in the future. Right, right. Uh, as opposed to, I don't like writing because everybody makes me feel bad about it. Right. <laughs> so sad. It, it um, is, and it happens. Right. To way too many of us. Oh, yeah. Um, so another thing we wanted to cover in this uh, episode here is the fact that you can ask for specific feedback, oh, yeah. and um, we want to emphasize knowing what to ask for right. when you ask for feedback. Um, so it really depends on your professor how they're going to run the feedback session, but usually what I like to do when I meet with my students one-on-one -on -one for their feedback uh, from me I ask them first, okay, what is it that you want help with from me? Right. Uh, because if I just dive into telling them what I think about their paper and what they should change, mm -hmm. then I'm, gonna, I'm kind of being too directive a little bit. I'm not letting them speak up and ask for the specific help they need. And so maybe I won't hit upon the help they need. Right. And so I'm not being very helpful at all. Um, right. So don't be afraid to ask for specific feedback either from your professor or from your classmates if you do feedback sessions like that. Right. Um, tell them, hey, I am stuck on this one idea. Can you help me? I don't know where to go from here. How do I transition to my next thought? Mm -hmm. I don't have a next thought. Can you help me? Uh, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. Yeah, help me. I'm dying. Uh, <laughs> no. But, uh, <laughs> but you, you can request right. feedback because, again, you are the authority of whatever you're creating. Right. And and uh, so you know, you know what you want to do. It's just maybe we hit a wall sometimes, and right. it happens to all of us. Yeah, um, and, and to really, really emphasize mm -hmm. the idea that you are the author of your creation. You are the authority. There's a mm -hmm. reason those words overlap. If somebody gives you feedback, and they tell you, you know, why don't you try doing this? Mm -hmm. As the author, as the authority, you can freely go, nope. <laughs> <laughs> you can choose to use the feedback you get. Uh, if you go to a professor and they give you some feedback and they say, well, you could do this, um, and they, you know, they suggest that you should, then maybe, yeah, you should take that suggestion because they're your audience and they're the ones you need to appeal with. Mm -hmm. uh, but if somebody else gives you feedback that you're, that they're like, well, I didn't find it funny enough, and part of you is like, I didn't want it to be funny, <laughs> you can choose not to use that feedback. Right. Uh, just as long as you're engaging the audience that you're aiming for, just... You can pick and choose. You right. are the authority. Right, right. And it happens. And it's not that the feedback giver is mean or wrong or anything. It's just that they see things from different perspectives mm -hmm. than you. And maybe sometimes that uh, that perspective isn't right on the mark, which right. is okay. Um, on the on the same in the same token, uh, sometimes they may emphasize things that you yourself missed, and mm -hmm. uh, you can say, "Oh, well, you know what, like." I get where they're going with their feedback. Maybe I will incorporate it here mm -hmm. or in another part of my paper. 
Um, or maybe I need to change up this one paragraph to really emphasize what I'm going for because they didn't get it. Right. Um, so they can illuminate things that you didn't see, uh, which is okay because that happens to all of us that we miss things because we're so ingrained in our own perspective. It happens. Yeah, I, I noticed that, you know, in, in all writers, not just student writers, mm -hmm. we go a little blind to yeah. our own stuff. Nose blind. Yeah, nose With blind. With the Febreze commercials. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, we go blind because in our head, if there are if there are gaps in our writing, our head fills them in. Oh, yeah, because we and, know what we're talking about. Yeah, in your, in your head, it's like, yeah, this makes sense. And, of course, it does because your head is filling in all the blanks. Mm -hmm. But if you pass it off to someone who is your target audience and go, I don't know what you mean by this. Don't take that as an insult. Take that as an opportunity to go, oh, right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I really need to approach this for my audience like this right, right. so that they don't get lost right because it happens yeah. we just tend to just go nose blind to our oh writings. yeah <laughs> it happens to all of us even oh, yeah. us oh, yeah. um so to sum everything up uh feedback is receiving help from each other and offering help to the other person to get their their ideas solidified and then later to edit out any mistakes that may have slipped by um, it's important because we want to make sure everything we do is as effective as possible and we kind of need a second or third or fourth pair of eyes to help do that. And um, giving and receiving effective feedback means that it's emphasis on content and making it stronger. It's polite. It's constructive. Mm -hmm. And it helps us accomplish our purpose for the specific audience in a shape, uh, i.e. form, that mm -hmm. um, is most appropriate. Yep. Yeah. So that is it for us for today, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that, yeah. <laughs> it's 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 kind of it's this is such a simple concept, but it's also very important to emphasize those things uh, right. over and over and over. So right. if we get a little repetitive, it's because we might say it once, twice, a million times. Do not focus on grammar. Do not focus on spelling. And inevitably, somebody will go, but. Can I just fix this one word? Is this one phrase? And mm -hmm. it's it's this ingrained thing, this threshold we need to break through. Right, right. Uh, or so, redo, not yes. so much like get rid of completely. Right. No, of course. Um, and it, yeah. Yeah, and uh, of course, your feedback sessions and the way you run feedback, the way you give feedback, the way you receive feedback is going to look different in every class for every professor. Mm -hmm. But uh, we hope some of these general tips are still helpful. Oh yeah. Yeah. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us uh, or ask your professor. Oh, yeah. Bye, guys. Bye. All right. Uh, this is Thomas. I'm here with Cindy, and we're here with our very special guest, uh, Ms. Marianne Escamilla. Uh, we're here today to talk to you about service learning and service learning assessment, correct? Feedback. 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 I don't Feedback know. assessment. I think it, I think it yeah. kind of works together. Yeah. So, Marianne, do you want to tell us what service learning is first? Before uh, usually, service learning um, is a combination of uh, of serving the community. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it, it's it's a combination of what internship is mm -hmm. and volunteer work mm -hmm. and a community service. And that's usually uh, students usually have an idea as to what community service is. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. what they do when they go collect you know, junk on the beach, which right. is a great thing to do. Mm -hmm. and I'm not going to sure. flub it. Uh, and it's also like if you've ever had too many parking tickets, mm -hmm. they go off and do that ah. and stuff like that. That's I learned that from students, by the way. <laughs> I had no idea, which I did know, but I didn't. But uh, so that that's that. Um, and then, of course, internship mm -hmm. is uh, when somebody goes off and they work. And, and both of those, you have one person being... Uh, more of a benefit, ha have more of a benefit than the other. In community service, it would be the agency, you know, the beach people would have right. the most, and the people would just go in and do it for four hours and leave. Yeah. Uh, in internship, you have the intern learning everything, mm -hmm. and sure, the organization gets something out of the intern, but the mm -hmm. intern gets, you know, basically they're a sponge. Right. Yeah. Uh, community uh, Service learning is, uh, tries to be an equal medium of the two, uh -huh. where you have the student learn something Mm -hmm. and um, the community also benefit That's equally right. and with that there's a trick that you have to be uh, very close to the community members right you have to have uh, developed a relationship mm -hmm. uh, the two organizations that I am now most familiar with is the College of uh, 
college assistance migrant program, mm-hmm. the CAMP program. I've been working with them for the past five years and uh, the food pantry mm-hmm. of the UTRGB. Again, I've had I've been with them for five years mm-hmm. and they know my style and I know what it is they're interested in. So that's how that is. And for students that don't know, that are wanting to take courses like this, especially those that are interested in social work mm-hmm. or just wanting to do things for community, uh, environmental students and things like that. Right. If they look at the, um, when they're registering for classes, they'll have an S designator and those will be service learning classes. Oh, okay. ah. So that way they'll actually go out and seek them. Right. And th- there won't be a surprise at the end either. So right. if there's right. an S, <laughs> yeah. So if there's an S, they can expect they can things. expect service. Right, right. Yeah. Um, do you want to tell us a little mm-hmm. bit about like a specific example of what you do for service lane? I know uh, the zombie walk is one of your big things. We right? do do the zombie walk. That's every uh, fall, mm-hmm. and uh, what ends up happening with that is uh, basically. It's a big marketing campaign. Right. Right. Uh, the students, because 13, and, and it's de- designed for 1302 students, mm-hmm. where you have the persuasive essay come into play. And mm-hmm. and a lot of people say, oh, you're clap. We, we do watch a zombie show, which is Z Nation, mm-hmm. not The Walking Dead. There's mm-hmm. reasons for that. One, I prefer one over the other. Right. That's the first one. <laughs> also, Z Nation cast, crew, and producers have all donated mm-hmm items to the zombie walk and they oh. know us oh wow That's yeah cool. yeah and 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 so it's it's kind that. of like yeah it's kind of neat, that is really neat. we've gotten giveaway items from z nation wow. from yeah david michael latt okay. and uh keith allen also sent over some free items so we could raffle off and That's the students cool. did a t-shirt for him Aww. signing him thank you because it was that week that uh year mm-hmm. he they came over to the alamo uh, convention, the Alamo Comic Con in oh. San Antonio, and he gave me his free tickets. Oh, Beca- wow. uh, yeah, and it was really neat. So the students all sent a T-shirt thanking him for his contributions and Z Nation's contributions. That's right. So I actually have a T-shirt, uh, uh, a picture of Keith Allen, who is the lead actor of Z Nation. Wow, wearing a UTRGB shirt. Yeah, wow. That's cool. <laughs> you know, usually when I when I tell students like take take a service learning course, like yeah. I'm always encouraging yeah. it because it, mm-hmm. it had a big impact mm-hmm. on me when mm-hmm. I was a graduate yes. student, mm-hmm. and that stuck with me. Mm-hmm. Like it has never, I've never mm-hmm. forgotten it. Yeah. Um, and I tell them, you know, the the impact that you have on the community mm-hmm. is immense, and the impact it has on you mm-hmm. is just as powerful. So right. to hear that we've actually like. Yeah. That our service learning has gotten to that point where yeah. we're like, yeah, hey, uh, we're on TV. Yeah, <laughs> they know us. As a matter of fact, uh, unfortunately, the show was canceled, but mm-hmm. I had been offered to, if I wanted to go to where they filmed, that I could be a zombie. I could wow. be a zombie. So it was really cool. It was Like I said, I've met almost everyone in the cast, and right. they know what we're about. That's and really they cool. They know UTRGB. Yeah. And that's what I want to show the students, right. that you throw out a, a, a little pebble and you get a trickle back. Oh, you yeah. You have a sure. trickle back effect. Mm-hmm. And uh, so what the marketing campaign is, is they learn about mm-hmm. the Z Nation, but I don't show it as a TV appreciation class mm-hmm. or a film appreciation class. What we do is I try to have them look as to why the producers did this. Mm-hmm. And I know enough behind the scenes thing that happened as they were creating the Mm -hmm. show where I say, okay, well, this, in in this scene, Keith Allen said this scene a certain way. Right. And the director said, okay, say it this way. Mm. And they went, when they edited it, they went with the one where Keith hadn't done it the same way. And he was upset. He's like, oh my gosh. So we, I asked the students, why do you think they went that route? Right. Right. Why as a writer, why as a producer, why as a, and so Mm -hmm. it goes into the composition of it. It isn't just that, ooh, we get to watch a show, Show. which I do love. I'm not going to lie. If I'm going to sit there watching a show, I'm going to do one that I enjoy talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And, um. So we do do it that way. And then at the end, we um, we make posters, we mm-hmm. make flyers, and they look at the different ways that... Uh, how, why is a flyer different than a poster? Mm. Why? Mm. What? What? What makes a flyer be more need more information than a poster? Need right. more information. Why is 
one composition different than the other. Right. right. So when you look at this show, you're talking about, well, what, what were the rhetorical choices exactly. behind making this scene this way? Exactly. And then when you're talking about flyer versus poster, which some students mm -hmm. might be like, what is the difference? Mm -hmm. You're talking about genre analysis exactly. right there and the exactly. rhetorical choices that need to go into it. And it goes into the whole multimodal mm -hmm. discussions oh, for as sure. well. Yeah. For yeah. sure. Because a lot of the times, one of the things that I do is I'll say, okay, let's create a video mm -hmm. so that you can influence somebody right. to go and do that. And... Um, then at the end, we have the actual zombie walk, and they experience it, and they get to see the impact that they made. Mm -hmm. And it's and it's an immediate thing that they see, which is different than 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 when you make a TV show or whatever. They okay. actually get to see it within the semester, and I love that because mm -hmm. they get to see what they what they've done. Mm -hmm. And the interesting part is Clarissa de la Fuente, who is now the director of the food pantry, was in my very first zombie walk class, oh. Oh. and uh, she. Actually, be applied for a ass student assistantship because she had been a part of my class. That's really cool. And then she stayed on, and she was offered the position. Of that. So it's it's a really neat thing. Right, yeah. right. And I'm sure they have a lot of fun doing it too. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah. That's I, great. That's and, amazing. Um, and I remember she, one of the girls on the TV show was pregnant, so she wanted to play the girl. And she kept walking in every week before the zombie walk. I can't find a belly. Aww. I can't find a belly. And I'm like, what are you looking for a belly? And she's the skinniest little girl. She goes to Zumba every, every workout class on here. But she's like, I need a belly. It's like, no, you're, you're fine. fine. You're good. Yeah, don't worry about it. Don't stop it. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, um, I think in the past five years, Mm -hmm. We have, I think, gotten about maybe 1,500 pounds of food donated wow. to the UTRTV Food Pantry. That's awesome. Right. Yeah. And so maybe this is a good opportunity for our students to kind of hear about, well, what is the UTRTV Food Pantry? Because, uh, <laughs> right. you know, I tell them at the beginning of the semester, mm -hmm. you know, we have this. And they're mm -hmm. like, what? Yeah. You know, yeah. So, so could you tell us a little yeah. bit about uh, that? I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because uh, one of the things... A lot of my students that do 1302 will have taken me before and because they've taken me in 1301 or their right. friends have taken me. So I'll ask the question, how many of you know the UTRGV food pantry exists? And maybe three or four mm -hmm. will say yes. Mm -hmm. And so one of my first tasks is I tell them to go find it. Mm. <laughs> go find it, take a selfie. That's your first task, right? Because that's going to be the first task of the people that they influence. Oh, right. sure. So they have to know how exactly. To do it. So the food pantry exists for any student that is registered for one class mm -hmm. at UTRGV. They don't have to provide um, proof of income. Mm -hmm. They just have to be a student, and they'll go in and they'll put the applications in, and they'll get food. I believe it's once a week. Mm -hmm. They get the staples. I believe they have certain times. They're not open all the time. I think it's two to five or something like that right. and uh, but it's a great way for students to go in and um, and get food so they are not food insecure right. I mean they don't have to be starving and I think a lot of people think I'm not going to go to the food pantry because I won't qualify I, well I don't qualify but also some of them I say I still have loaves of a loaf of bread and peanut butter mm. which is great yeah but if you're not going to get paid until Friday and it's Tuesday Mm -hmm. You still need your nourishing meal, for right. sure. So you can go in there and get some cans of corn, and sometimes it's tied to the community garden where they actually get f fresh lettuce and fresh vegetables oh, wow. donated to them from there. Uh -huh. So they can actually make that kind of stuff. And there's also healthy workshops, and there's some coming up mm -hmm. where they show students what to do with the food. Oh, wow. Oh, because yeah. a lot of students have never been away from home. Yeah. Never had to make their own food. And they've food. never had to make their own food. And they'll have a can of corn, and the only thing they know what to do with is heat it up mm. and <laughs> eat it eat with it. butter. Yeah. Which is not bad. And that's good. But <laughs> if you've got... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, that's how I eat it. <laughs> but if they have other things they can add it to, they get some black beans in there and something else, they can make a nice salad mm -hmm. and, and put mm -hmm. it together. Right. So they have those kind of healthy workshops. That's I think amazing. the next one is going to be in February, and they're going to do like banana smoothies. Oh, right, to wow. make a banana smoothie. Right. That's really awesome. Is mm -hmm. there is there a calendar maybe online? Because I know this they, might be yeah. like right now we're recording it, right, and it might be happening. Right. But is there a way where they can kind of find they those? They do things? have it on a calendar online, but they can also find out through the uh, Facebook page of mm. the UTRDV oh, okay. Food Pantry. That's okay. how I found out. Okay, right. great. And they'll sometimes send uh, the UTRDV Messenger. They'll also send those invites as oh, well. Oh, good. Okay, okay, so good. it's no. actually really neat. And at the end... Um, 
when my students do do their final project, it's hilarious because they've been working up to doing it for mm-hmm. Halloween, and it's around the Halloween season. And so there's 10 weeks that they've been building up. Mm-hmm. Zombie walk, zombie walk, zombie walk. And I know the day that I have gotten them mm-hmm. is when I tell them. I, I usually have, like, mid-semester, mm-hmm. I have a lesson on uh, where they look at back at their syllabi, mm-hmm. their syllabus, And I'll tell them, okay, I want you guys all to look at the SLO, Mm. Student Learning Outcomes. Right. Right. And I assign each group one student learning outcome. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I'm tapping on the table too much. Um, (laughs) And uh, I tell them, pick out three or four words Mm -hmm. that you think are vital. Right. And then think of all the assignments that we've done that connect to that SLO. Mm. (laughs) <laughs> and then go ahead and let's write six to seven hundred words as to how it connects back and how this relates to right. your writing and what have you learned so far. Mm-hmm. Have we done it? Right. And so they end up doing that. But the first question that I ask them all the time is, what's your main goal for this class? Mm-hmm. Right. And in my head is to pass it yeah. or to get an A. Right. right. <clears throat> there, without fail, they will all say, to have a good zombie walk, Aww. and that's when I know they bought it. <laughs> it's like, yes, I've got them. <laughs> I'm like, that's amazing. Yeah, right. yeah. Uh, but their grade is not tied to the amount of food they bring in. Right. That's right. one thing that I always have to get up and telling them. It's like, it doesn't matter. Even if we have three cans of food donated mm. by somebody that's not associated with the class, I consider it a success. Right, right. yeah. Because that's three cans of food the food pantry didn't have, right. first and foremost. Mm-hmm. But people will now know about what the food pantry is. As a matter of fact, there's another story that I have about a student who was in my class who was sitting at the at the student union one time. Mm-hmm. And she said that there was this girl that was just looking at her, and she was finishing off some chicken nuggets or something, mm-hmm. whatever. And she left some. And the girl just kept looking, and she sat closer and closer to her. Mm-hmm. And she finally, my student finally said, are you okay? And the girl's like, I just haven't eaten. Oh. So it kind of makes you wonder how long this girl hadn't eaten right. for you to tell a perfect stranger they hadn't eaten. Right. right. And she said, is there any way that I can have your leftover nuggets if mm-hmm. you're done? And the girl's like, sure. And, and they started talking. And so what my student did is she took her and walked her over to the food pantry. Oh. And they got her signed up. And she goes, I don't know if she'll go back. Mm-hmm. But she goes, one, I know that I know now where to send people. Mm -hmm. And she goes, and that's something I never knew. Right. And I know, she might not go back, but I know for that week she had food. Yeah. Right. And that felt really good. And and, and you're kind of like giving some sort of empowerment to them and that they're affecting people in the community Mm -hmm. in ways that they never thought that they could. Right. Right. Yeah. And so this whole, when everybody starts talking about how millennials are, I built my zombie walk on millennials. Right. So nobody can sit there and tell me, oh, millennials are horrible. Uh, yeah. No, they're not. Yeah. <laughs> they yeah. just have to motivate them in a certain way. Right, mm-hmm. right. Right. Which yep. is true for anybody. Exactly, really. exactly, yeah. exactly. Go yeah. figure that you give people something to care about. Yeah, no kidding. About it, right? yeah. Oh, my gosh. Look <laughs> <laughs> that. If only they could see your facial expression right now. Yeah. How sassy it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's important. <laughs> uh, so uh, you mentioned that you want to talk about service learning feedback. feedback. So. Right, yeah. right. And so at the end, um, we end up uh, doing reflections as to what happened. And that's where I was building, too, that they have those 10 weeks. Mm-hmm. And uh, they end up feeling empty mm. when, they have, when they've done the, the event. Mm-hmm. So because it's service learning, the, the reflection is tied back into it. And uh, what I like doing is that's where the feedback comes in, where Mm -hmm. we start figuring out, okay, what would we have been able to do better? Right. What did you learn? If you were to do this again, what can we do next time? Right. What do we have to do? So at the end, what they end up doing is, in a way, I've been having them right okay they they have to come up with their own and which is why i love that you guys started with define service learning Mm -hmm. because if you look at every service learning paper that's Mm -hmm. out there in every journal Mm -hmm. it will start off with the author's definition of service learning because there is not one set definition right right 
And so that's what I always do with the students. They have to come up with their own definition of service learning. Oh, that's good. And then they come up with the rationale as to why we need to do it, which is what, and basically what you guys just did was walking through, without you guys knowing it. I'm going to get an A. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, um, and then the rationale behind it and the, com and the consequences that happened and what happened with the event. And then what to learn from it for mm -hmm. next time, but also what impact is it that you are making mm -hmm. in the community. And a lot of times they think they've been having fun, which mm -hmm. they have been, mm -hmm. right? But you can have fun, impact the community, and learn, which is the three pillars of the whole service learning. Right. right? right community, education, and the student themselves, and that whole translation of the two. And uh, then at the end, that's the paper that they write. Mm -hmm. And then for their reflection, but at the very end, they write a paper on what they learned about writing as a result of that. Right. Mm -hmm. And which, which of the three versions of your papers, you know, of your flyers was mm -hmm. better and ah. why. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So, so it all translates, and, and, and it may seem to the outside observer that all I'm doing is having my students watch zombie shows. <laughs> Right, I, I, and 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 I know that you guys know that it's more than that. Oh, right, I sure. know yeah. that, but I'm talking to the outside of right. the outside of this building. Right, right. go. What? what she How does this relate to exactly. writing? Yeah, I, exactly. It, I I know that mm -hmm. even within our classes that are a little bit uh, more traditional in the sense that mm -hmm. we haven't done. Server, I want to really, right, bad, right. But we haven't done it. But there are sometimes the activities that we do. That if it were, you know, if some random, if one of our students just went to go tell somebody else, mm -hmm. oh, this is what we did in English, they'd be like, what are you learning? Right. Exactly. And, and out of context, it doesn't sound mm -hmm. like it's effective. Exactly. But in the overall context, especially at that final mm -hmm. moment where they're all reflecting on what mm -hmm. they have yes. learned about mm -hmm. their effects, that's when it impacts. So there is always that concern of like, well, how does this relate? Yeah. Uh, and, I, and I hope that people, like, instead of just immediately dismissing it, mm -hmm. become more curious about yeah. it. Right. And see the impact mm -hmm. these students have, not only with the community but with themselves yeah. and their abilities to exactly. be effective writers. Right. And and that's another reason why I really enjoy utilizing Z Nation mm -hmm. with that because it kind of mirrors what they're going through. Mm -hmm. Because I, I will always tell them, no matter how many times I tell any class the first day, is that none of your work is busy work. Right. Yeah. Every oh, yeah. piece of work will relate back to your final project. For sure. But it's going to look messy. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So if you ever watch episode one of C, of Z Nation, mm -hmm. you don't know what's going on. You know there's zombies, sure. Yeah. But how, what, why is this dude strapped to a chair? Why are, who's these people? Who are these people? What's going on? What's happening? Mm -hmm. And that's how they feel. It kind of mirrors mm -hmm. that kind of feeling. Huh. And as oh. the as this as the uh, group is becoming more formed as a group, their groups are getting more formed as a group too. So it kind of like parallels oh. the right. concept. It's very meta. As well. It's yeah. yeah. I try. The course is very meta uh -huh. yeah. in that sense. I try to make it as much. Some of it just happened. Mm -hmm. Some of it. Uh, and 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 then I've exploited it right to right. the point where oh my god this can work and and. And it works because things like that do work. Mm -hmm. Right. However, I'm not going to lie to you. There will be some students that prefer a more traditional yeah. setting. And, that's just, fine. and yeah. one thing that I always tell people is that I I can do traditional mm -hmm. big time. I can do it. I just prefer not to. I'm like right. I'm almost a hundred. I can. I can. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I've been taught traditionally. I've taught traditionally. I like. Adding a little bit of right, you know, a little right. bit of pepper. And it, it's fine. A little if it's bit of paprika. For, yeah, like that. Just yeah. a spice, real yeah, quick. Exactly. And it's fine if it's not for everyone because mm -hmm. it's it's personal preference as well. How you learn. Yeah. But the no. very first time I did service learning, and I don't know if you guys still have time for this or not, <laughs> but the very first time I did service learning, um, it was really structured. Oddly, <laughs> they had to go to McAllen. And it could only be Mondays from 11 to 12. Oh. And yes. So it's very tricky. So right. what I did was I, I took one group of students mm. every time. Mm. And there were these two students that were unable to tell, which was fine. You're right. Yeah. Which was completely fine. So their job was to create a website that would highlight the ah. lessons. And so what it was is there was a group of ladies that... Uh, 
would do poetry mm. as part of their uh, physical therapy or their, their therapy. Oh. Mm-hmm. It was with Vidas Cruzadas with Linda Cruzadas. Romero. Okay. And, so, uh, my, and so I actually had to fight to get in there because they usually had upperclassmen mm. and oh, graduate, graduate students. students. Yeah. And this was the first time they ever had 1302 students do it. Mm. They fell in love with the students, Aww. and the students fell in love with them, and they were able to do that. So their job was they had to go two times. Mm-hmm. They had to go once to see a, a class beforehand, a, mm-hmm. a group beforehand, and mm-hmm. then they had to go and do it themselves. Okay. Mm-hmm. So there was always that. So they could they only had to do it two times, but finding that time was the tricky part. Right. Mm-hmm. Again, every single one did it except for two. Mm-hmm. And I remember when we were talking about the reflection part, mm-hmm. one of their big things was they said, I wish we had found time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because we had a different class than what those people had. Right. right. We had a different experience, and I can tell that they learned more right. than what I did. So I've been reading this book, and I don't know if you guys are familiar. His name's Adam Grant mm-hmm. uh, from Wharton College of Business. Mm-hmm. He's a philosopher. And he says that there's three types of people. Mm-hmm. There are givers, Mm -hmm. takers, and uh, matchers. Hmm. And he says that uh, for the most part, the most successful people are givers. And if you look at medical students, Mm -hmm. he says that in medical school, the givers will have lower grades first year Hmm. than they do than the other two. But as you go on, the givers will end up being more successful than the matchers and the takers. Mm. Mm. And I don't know if you guys have ever noticed that when you do feedback in the Mm. class, those students that provide the best feedback Mm. are your best students. Right, yes, for sure. Or at least the ones that can manipulate, yes. Yes. And and so I was really, so if you guys have not gotten this book, it's called Give and Take by Adam Grant. You've got to read it. Right. And there's another one called Originals. Mm. And it was written by, with him and Sheryl Sandberg. Mm. And so those are, and they're business books, but you can apply them to everything. For right. sure. And, and so I, I'm hoping, I, I think I'm at a matching point. I, I want to become a good giver. That's, that's my goal. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. As we all should. Yeah. Be beneficial. And not just because you want to become successful. You're right. Just because I think that you, 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 you can affect more. Yeah. Right. Just the inherent mm-hmm. ability to do it and mm-hmm. want to do it is, mm-hmm. is what mm-hmm. brings that yeah. success with it right yeah. yeah all right is there so uh we want to end with any final thoughts you want to leave with your students or any potential future students who might be listening to this and going oh, i kind of i dig z nation i think <laughs> <laughs> well, i don't know if i'm going to find people that dig z nation <laughs> off the top <laughs> but i will tell you this um when students tell me when i say oh you guys probably watch the walking dead a lot of them will go Oh no, that's my parents. Oh, it, yeah, oh no. apparently. Ow. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. Everybody get out. <laughs> Don't talk to me anymore. I need to sit here for a bit. <laughs> I didn't hear that one coming either. I was just like, uh, but no, I think that so long as uh, students find something positive and you find something as a, to do as a service, mm-hmm. if it's something that you're passionate about, they'll pick up on your passion. For mm-hmm. sure. And even now I have students, they'll come up to me and say hello to me and they'll come up to me and say, oh, do you remember? Mm -hmm. Uh, Oh, my God, did you see Z Nation premieres on or something like that? Or or they'll say, oh, guess what? I got into this or what have you. So, yeah. I I always tell my students, you know, you're in an okay class because if you ever see me say hello to a student, they said hi to me first. You could tell that I'm. Probably yeah. okay because they didn't try to shuffle off. Exactly. Because they didn't yeah, know me. Exactly. So always a good sign. Yeah. <laughs> always a good sign. All right. Alrighty. Well, thank you so thank much. Thank you. It was fun. It was really awesome. Absolutely. Yay. Thank you.